Hi guys, and welcome to another episode from the Mechanical Timepiece. My name's Rob, if it's your first time here, thanks very much for clicking on the link. Uh, really pleased to have you come along. Um, today we're gonna to be looking at this, which is the Phileda SE11, also known as the NTD, NTTD, the No Time To Die uh, homage. Uh, a homage of a watch that we've not even yet to see on the silver screens. So uh, the uh, Chinese manufacturers are getting really quite quick at this nowadays. Um, so today we'll go through the usual format. Um, we're gonna go through the specs, dimensions, etc. Then we'll uh, throw in a bit of macro as well. I have a macro lens now, so I can do a bit of that as well. Look at the loom. Uh, then we'll go on to look at the, the good, the bad, and the ugly in the watch, which is the, the things that I like, things that I don't like, and, the, and good old fashioned quality control issues. Um, I am, um, a, an affiliate now with AliExpress. If you do decide to go ahead and purchase one of these watches, and to be honest with you, I really would really recommend you look at these. I've been quite amazed at the quality of this one. Um, there's a link in the description below. It doesn't cost you any money, just takes you to the watch on AliExpress. And then AliExpress, as a little thank you, uh, give me a little bit of commission to go with it. So um, it's really, really helpful really helps the channel get going. Um, subscribers now are starting to starting to increase a little bit. If you do like the way I've done the video, please hit the like, hit the subscribe, really, 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 really helps us helps us along. So um, without further ado, what we'll do is we'll get it off the wrist, under the lights, and get on with the review. Okay, so let's have a nice, good, close look at this file leader. We have a diameter of 40 millimeters across here. It does say 41. Uh, on the website, but I've made, my calipers measure it at 40. Uh, including the crown is 44.4 millimeters. We have a lug to lug of 46.8 millimeters. And with these uh, extended parts on the strap, it comes in at 53.2. So it does actually wear a bit longer than you would expect. Depth is 14.2 millimeters and the bracelet is 20 millimeters, 20 millimeters and 20 millimeters all the way through. So, nice straight numbers. Uh, case 316L stainless steel. Uh, we have a lovely piece of dome sapphire on there. You can just see that there in the, in, the, uh, in the shop. We have a ceramic bezel insert with a 120 click uh, movement. Let's see if we can get this on the audio. Nice positive click on this one. Seems pretty good. Get that lined up. No back play to speak of. A um, little bit of wobble, but I'll talk about that in a second. No cyclops over the day. You'll see the day there is actually in the process of changing. Uh, this is because it's quite late at night when I'm doing the video. Uh, I must apologise for the lights. My normal one is broken, and oh, I've only got this one at the moment, so you'll see a bit of reflection. Um, we have a sort of a sterile case here. We have sterile crown and sterile case back no markings on there whatsoever um, the the case itself is a mixture of brushed and some polished edges and finishes on the sides there uh, the brushing is pretty good it's fairly even you can see some of the brush marks just across the case there um, but it's overall it's not too bad we have a sort of scalloped finish Across the across the bezel, uh, in line with the um, the Omega that it's that it's homaging against. There's nothing nothing particularly surprising there. As is the case back, in line with the with the Omega that it's homaging. Um, let's move on to the dial then. So we've got a I'm trying to get that can that reflection out as best it's going to get. I think um, we have a flat black dial, uh, double battens at twelve, single at six, single at six and nine, and a tiny little one at three there. Just over just next to the date window, uh, round indices everywhere else. They're all applied. Uh, we have a printed minute track around the outside. You'll see that there, and then um, Phileda logo at the top there with automatic water resistant 200 meters, uh, 660 feet, and then the uh, arrow marker just underneath. Uh, the loom is like a vintage loom. I'm going to see if I'm, I'm going to turn the lights off for a second, and we'll see if we can get a decent loom shot. So bear with me. Hopefully this will work. So you can see there the indices are all loomed up, as are the hands, second hand, and the pip on the bezel. It's not bad loom, this one. It's not amazing. Um, it's not going to last forever, but it's not too bad. Just coming back in with that one now. 
Um, the uh, hands there, the typical sword hands you would find on an Omega with a red tipped second hand there, um, lollipop style. Unframed date window on the, at three o'clock. Um, but otherwise, nice, pleasant, flat, black dial. Nothing to, nothing to complain about particularly. Um, inside this one, beating away in the back of it, is a Miyota 8215, 21 joules, 3 hertz, so spinning at 21,600, 6 beats a second. Uh, if you watch that, you can probably count them. 42-hour power reserve, hand-wind, non-hacking movement. So if you do like your movements to be uh, set very, very accurately, uh, this one's probably not going to be what you're looking for. But otherwise... Pretty good. This one's running about six seconds out a day, um, but not too bad. Um, the movement itself feels fine. Uh, normal, normal operation as you would expect. Let's have a look at the bracelet. So it's a 20 millimeter bracelet all the way around on this one. So it's a straight bracelet. Um, we have a, it's a three link bracelet. So you have what appears to be five, but the central three are link, are actually stuck together and then the two on the outer edge move are, are removable. And you, you can see that when you, do, when you do take the links out, you can see that's, that's evident. Uh, it's a mixture of brushed and polished, as you can see, very typically Omega style. They've done a pretty good job, actually. Um, we have a nice milled clasp, three-piece clasp there, with a proper diver's extension, which comes out thus. It is quite a long extension, uh, it's a good couple of links long actually, so it would only really work if you're using a wetsuit and then that folds in and just clicks back in, nice positive click. Double pushes to release that one, I'll show it on the wrist in a second. Um, only one thing is no micro adjust. Uh, so once it's you, you have to once you've set it with the links, you can't then change it. Let me just pop it on the wrist for you and give you a give you a quick look. So that's how it looks on my seven and a bit inch wrist. Uh, I had to take out uh, three and a half links to get this one to fit me, um, and it's comfortable. Um, the issue I would have is, in personally, in, in warm weather, my wrist tends to expand and I have to adjust the bracelet. With this, it would be a bit difficult because I would then have to add in a link, which means getting out the screwdrivers for the um, double screws you have on, the, on each side. One there one there, you take out both the screws and they are tiny. So if you're taking these out and be careful, and there's, a, and there's a pin that you push out from the central and then you can pull the link out. But other than that, fairly straightforward. Uh, Mons forgot to mention that. So helium escape valve there, it is threaded. Um, whether it actually does anything is remains to be seen, but it is there in, in true homage style. So what we're gonna do <coughs> is, uh, jump in here with a bit of uh, macro and we'll come back and talk about good, bad and the ugly in a second. Okay, so, so let's get the uh, macro lens on and have a look. So look at the dial first. See the little mark on the pip? Just moving around the bezel there. It's mostly quite clean inside of this particular bezel actually. It doesn't look too bad. The little mark there, you can see just there in the, in the in some, sometimes the inside of the lettering there is not perfect. Uh, but, you know, on a watch costing this much money, you can't really expect too much more. Um, it's going to give the uh, lens, it's going to give the glass a quick clean before we look at the dial in detail. So just look at that there. Applied indices, you'll see them just uh, in focus just there. You can check yourself whether they're straight. Applied markers all the way around. Date window just there, look. It's all nice flat black. The printing's pretty tight on this one. No issues there, really. General finishing of this particular watch is pretty good, actually, I have to say. Uh, see the iron the hands there. A few little marks on the side of the hands there, you can see. A few little tool marks there. But generally pretty good. Quick look at the um, finishing on the side of the case there, and the brushing. Little mark there on the end of the uh, on the end of the winder. In fact, you can see a little bit of the lacquer there that's come off. 
actually. And this watch has only been in my hands for about three days, three, four days, and I haven't worn it exclusively. See the brushing around there as well. Again there, a little bit of marking. A little bit of marking there on the end, you see that? You can see, when you look at it under a macro, is when you start to see the you start to see the difference in the quality, really, compared to some other the brands, some of the other brands. Look at the bracelet. One thing I would say about the bracelet is when I took all of the um, the stickers off when I first got the watch. You see the brushing there on the clasp. When I first got the watch, the um, the brush the the stickers when I took them off left a load of residue, and then it on the bat on the strap, and it took ages to get it all off. See, it's there just the finishing around generally pretty good um, I mean for this kind of price you probably wouldn't complain too much nice bit of thread on there the the, uh, the crown's pretty good to use I mean if you ever need to need to use the helium escape valve that's also pretty good but um, but there you go quick run over with the macro so we'll have and then we'll uh, head back to the other one okay so have a look at the good have a, had a look a good look around the dial there in the macro lens um, let's talk a look at the detail a little bit. Let's talk about good, the bad, and the ugly. The good on this watch, the things I like about this watch, and I think are very, very positive. The build quality is excellent on this watch. Uh, general feel of it is very, very good. It doesn't feel like a watch that costs less than hundred pounds. It feels much, much better. Um, the cost itself, as mentioned, hundred. It would cost me less than hundred pounds. I think. Well, I think with with the taxes and everything delivered to the UK, I think it was about hundred and two pounds or something um, and for that for that money it's a cracking watch it's a really nice watch um, and the finishing and the feel just feels like a nice thing it's a nice thing to wear as well okay so the bad things are uh, <coughs> things I don't like about the watch but are not necessarily the fault of the watch um, the movements are non-hacking movement I do prefer to set my movements accurately uh, so that for me is, is, a, is a minus um, the loom, as you saw, is okay. It's not amazing, um, but does the job. I mean, how, how often are you actually going to use the loom on a watch like this is, is debatable. Um, no micro adjust on the strap, as I've talked about already. Um, the lack of originality generally in the design. I mean, all credit to Omega, no credit to Phileda. Um, and last but not least, the um, I would have liked to have seen some sort of branding or signing on the clasp and on the crown. This just they're just sterile. I mean, the back of the what the back case back I can forgive. That's the style of the watch, but I would have liked to have seen something on there. Uh, and then lastly, we talk about anything ugly. So this is this is Q, QC issues with this particular watch. Um, not many, to be honest with you. I've, I've really struggled to find anything that's particularly bad with it. Um, the only things I've managed to find are a little bit of wobble in the in the bezel laterally. So I'm just trying to get that, get that on the camera. Not sure if you can see that moving actually, but it does. It does move that way ever so slightly, um, but very, very. I mean, my Christopher Ward is worse, and that's a watch that costs that costs originally probably sixteen times as much. So I'm not going to complain too much about it. The only one that does bother me ever slightly is the end links are, although solid, um, are not that tight, and they're both they're both on the same. Both the same one on either end. They're, they're not. They're solid end links. It's a good solid bracelet, but they're just not that tight. I think if I was going to keep this one long term, um, I'd probably be looking at either putting it onto a NATO or some, on, a, on an alternative strap. I pr also with the strap there, just a preference. I forgot to mention this. I would have preferred some taper in the bracelet. The fact that it's straight all the way down, I think, is a bit. It overpowers the brace. Overpowers the watch a little bit. The bracelet's a bit big for the for the watch. Either the case should have been maybe 42 with this straight 20 mil bracelet, or this should have been 20, maybe sort of down to, to 16 or 17, then maybe back up to 18 at the class would have been quite nice. But um, but overall, a very, very nice piece, a very, very nice piece. I, I, would, I wouldn't I would hesitate anyone actually looking into buying this one. It's a very nice thing to have. And if you do consider doing it, please, you know, there are affiliate links in the description below. So um that's always that's always beneficial to everyone involved. Um, so there you have it. Ni another nice watch from Phileda. Do I recommend it? Yes, I would. Um, I'm looking forward to getting on, getting my hands on another Phileda actually soon. So look out for that one. 
Uh, one interesting point, would I compare this one to the to the Kronos L6005 that I tried, um, which was 50 or 60 pounds more, but it did have a PT5000 in it. Um, is it 50 or 60 pounds more watch than this? No, not really. Um, the Kronos is nice, but the Kronos had its own issues, and actually the quality control on the Kronos was worse than this. So overall, I would recommend one of these of the two. So thanks again for watching, and, uh, and yeah, hopefully see you the next time. So there you have it. <coughs> so there you have it, another great watch from Phileda. This one has been uh, really, really good. I was really quite amazed at the quality of this one. I can really find no quality control major issues at all with it. Um, a couple of things I don't like about it, but otherwise it's a cracker. Um, thanks for watching. Please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. It makes a really big difference. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks very much.